Welcome to the John McAllister Report with top football talent evaluator John McAllister interviewing college and high school coaches and athletes. Enjoy today's podcast. Good afternoon. Welcome to the John McAllister Report. Uh, Today, my guest is Kevin Johns, the new offensive coordinator at, at Duke University. He is also coaching the quarterbacks. Kevin and I go back to when he was a high school senior at Piqua. He went on to Dayton, played some football at Dayton at quarterback, and then he went to Northwestern, and he has moved up the ranks, and he's been in a lot of different places. Today, we talk about quarterbacks a little bit. We talk about recruiting more than I have before. So it's really interesting to get his perception and his and his ideas on college football recruiting. So if you'll sit back, relax, and listen to my podcast with Kevin Johns, the offensive coordinator at Duke University. Welcome to my podcast, Kevin Johns, and uh, you need to tell me a little, right now you're at Duke, yep. and I have two other friends down there at Duke. That's right. Besides you, I don't know Mike as well, but when he was at Bowling Green, that's when I got to know him, yep. and he treated me with respect, and that's all I care about. Yeah. So. You know, you never forget how, how people make you feel, right? No, no and, oh, for and, sure. And, <laughs> Either but, way. <laughs> That's right, good or bad. Yeah, no, he Coach Elko's phenomenal though. Um, he's such a down to earth person, um, a blue collar guy. Uh, and honestly, though, John, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever been around. Him and Kevin Wilson, to me, are the two football coaches that are eerily smart. That they can just see at one time and they got it, you know, and they, and they can regurgitate it. Um, but they see big picture. You know, he, he's a great manager of, of, of offense and defense and of, of the roster. Um, but just been extremely impressed. And I'm so glad I get the chance to work for him. And I know we're going to do great things here. That's really good. I met him at Bowling Green and, you know, he's climbed the ladder the right way. No doubt. Okay. Sure has. Kevin, now, what's your position at Duke? I know you just got there, but tell me what's going on at Duke for you. Yep. So on the offensive coordinator, coach the quarterbacks. Um, right now, we're we're getting ready to, to head into our spring recruiting season uh, during the month of end of April and in, into May. Uh, but at the same time, what we're doing right now is really evaluating our spring cutups, and just with the new scheme that we put in, uh, the new verbiage, just making sure that as 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 a new coaching staff, we're all on the same page with what we're teaching, what we're doing. Uh, do we like the concepts we put in? Do we like our schemes? You know, what tweaks do we want to make? So really just a lot of self uh, um, observations and self evaluation to see uh, are we doing the, what's best? And, and really, we got to look at our offense and what we're doing and how does it fit the personnel that we have here at Duke? And so I think any football coach can come up with great plays, but it's all about putting your players in the best position to be successful. And so, you know, we're trying to figure out what do we have here um, and then how can we put these guys in the best position to win games? And I know you need to be recruiting, but your top recruits are in your campus right now, I think. <laughs> no doubt about it. That's yeah. right. Spending, that's yeah. right. As much, and those things yeah, out. as much time as we can with our current players. And, and you're right. Um, yes. These kids here have been so hungry. They've been so such great attitudes um, that really now it's just a matter of us, again, getting them bigger, stronger, faster, and then also uh, familiar with our scheme and our language. Okay. Good. Real quickly, and I want to come back to quarterbacks eventually, but to, you started at Piqua, and I'm guessing you, what, 45, 46? How old are you, 45? I'm, 40, I'm 46 years old. Yes, sir. Not bad. Not yeah, bad. Not bad. That's oh, right. Got an idea of when you were in high school. That's you're right. good. That's right. You're, you're dead on. So you started out, let's just backtrack. Where did you, when you were at Memphis then before, right? Yep. Yep. Memphis, you've been an offensive coordinator there. 
Yep, for three years. What other stops real quickly? Okay, yeah. So before Memphis was one year at Texas Tech uh, with Coach Cliff Kingsbury um, as offensive coordinator, coaching the wide receivers. Um, Before that, spent one year at Western Michigan with Tim Lester in his first year on that job there as offensive coordinator quarterbacks. And then before that was with Kevin Wilson at Indiana uh, for really, I think, six years total um, as co-coordinator, doing quarterbacks, receivers, um, which that was a great, you know, time of my life, great experience as well, trying to get that program turned around. Uh, mm-hmm. Before that, then finally would have been Northwestern University, and and that's really where everything started for me uh, with Randy Walker as a head coach, and then when he passed, Pat Fitzgerald took over. Um, so spent a, a total of ten years there at Northwestern uh, before going to Indiana. My own, my Randy Walker joke, who was a tremendous guy. Yep. If you knew him. I know, first, right, right, right. The first two or three times, maybe three times, it, you know, I was kind of introduced to him and stuff, and he kind of just like was, hey, okay, how you doing? Because yeah. I was in that recruiting stuff, you know, that was yeah. new. And then yeah. it's a funny story. We'll go, but if, if Coach Walker was in his golf cart, and we were talking, a group of us, and he said, yeah. come on, Mac, let's go for a ride. I'll show you around. I said, I'm accepted by Randy Walker. Yeah, right. That's right. I, I felt so good riding around yeah. with him because he. Yeah. And of course, uh, after him was even better. I don't think you were there then, but uh, yeah, the guy uh, India went to India, and I can't even think of his name right now. Great guy. He passed as well. Yeah, uh, Hepner, Terry Hepner, yeah, one of the best. Yeah, I think hey. uh, Randy Walker. You know, God love him because one of those guys that hired me. My my first full time coaching job in college football was in the big 10 being hired by Randy Walker. And, and who could ever say that anymore? Right. Like how many coaches really hire GAs yeah. to be full time? That just doesn't happen anymore. And, you know, not only was it myself, but it was Adam Cushing, who's our, our line coach now, a good friend of mine named Matt McPherson, who still coaches at Northwestern. You know, those are three examples of, of guys that Randy Walker hired right out of being GAs in the big 10 that, just wow. nobody does that anymore. But he really believed in keeping his staff young, um, wanted us to coach with some energy and passion, and and um, we certainly do love them and, and miss them every single day. And I think that's so important. And I think talking about staffs, I think you you keep them young because it's a different different game now. Obviously, sure now being seventy three, I also think it's good to have a couple of older, longer than tooth guys there for wisdom. Yeah, there, no, you, I, I think you for sure need a good balance. I just think that Coach Walker would always say this is this is a young man's profession. And he would always say that, that just wow. with recruiting and especially nowadays with transfer portal and right. recruiting how it is and NIL. But you, you do. You need to coach with energy and passion. You need to be chasing your players around uh, on the field. And, and yeah. it's a young man's profession. Now, I say that, but now I'm getting older. So I want to make sure it's still an old man's profession as well. Okay. Well, I'm sure with your knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about quarterbacks real quick. Yep. If I'm, if my son, grandson, six four, what are you looking for in quarterbacks? If yeah. you go out to, now, are you guys area recruiting or uh, position recruiting, or what are you doing it? Yeah. Do? Yeah. So we do a little bit of both. Um, okay. We we for sure want to start in our area though, uh, and that's something that's very important to Coach Elko for us to cultivate those relationships with the high school coaches. Right. Uh, and really look to dig up players that that sometimes fall through the cracks. Um, I don't know that that we're in a position to recruit um, like maybe bigger programs that can just recruit the five star athletes. Um, so we got to go dig them up. We got to find some, some great players and some diamonds in the rough. And you can't do that if you're only chasing your position. Uh, right. So we'll, we'll for right. sure do area. Really, if, if you took, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a total of 17 or 18 days for each coach during the recruiting May period, we take about half of those days for our area and then about half of those days for our position. Right. Um, but I would say for a quarterback to me, uh, you know, just talking physically, what am I looking for? To me, it all starts with the release. Uh, how does the ball come out of the young man's hand? Um, right. If he can get it out quick, then you have my attention. Um, right. That's number one. Number two would be just uh, velocity on the throw, right? Like arm strength. I think that's very important. Uh, to look for. And then I would say accuracy uh, that you're, you know, you need a guy that can put the ball in in tight windows and in the right spot. Uh, I do pay attention to completion percentage of how a kid does during his sophomore, junior seasons um, before we make that decision. But 
Um, if, a, if, a, if a young man in high school can't complete 65 to 70 percent of his passes, it's going to be really hard to do that at the college level. Right. Um, so those are things that are important to me. And then I look for your 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 feet in the pocket and your footwork. Um, I don't know that I necessarily need a quarterback that can run a four four. So I don't know that I would say he has to be fast, but he has to have good feet that he can move, get out of the pocket, avoid the rush and run well enough, I think, to go get a first down right. and extend some drives for us. I call that escapability. Yep. Exactly. No, he can escape, and that sounds yep. maybe it's the wrong word to use for a quarterback. Right. But I think you got to be able to get out and stuff like that. There's no doubt, and and I tell guys too now nowadays, like the D linemen that are rushing you, those guys are first round draft picks. You know, <laughs> those guys are freak athletes. That if you don't have somebody that can move, you're just a sitting duck back there. Yeah, it's true. Inside yeah. or outside. Right. Right. <laughs> The old down tackles, you know, now some yeah. of them are, are, are stuffers, but a lot of them, boy, they get off that, use those hands and slap around and all yep. that stuff. Yeah. Really good. I, I'm always interested in quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, what about recruiting? Now, Duke's a little different. Here's what I would say at Duke, and I use this analogy. I think some of the more power five schools that spend a lot of money legally or illegally, I think – those guys get a higher profile player. It's almost like pro type guy and make, and he levels off. I think Duke and Cincinnati and these guys, I think you take the really good player and turn him into a pro player. Yep. If you're doing your job, I mean a really, but make him, he's ready for the pros. Yep. And, and that's tough, but that's, and, I, and there is. are a lot of diamonds in the rough though. It is. I, I will it's, always say that. Know, recruiting has sped up so quickly that oh my. at a high school, if if you don't show by late sophomore year, early junior year that you're a, a phenomenal guy, then then sometimes you can get passed up. Yeah. Well, the problem is you're not giving those kids a chance to develop, right? Which yeah. is the word that you just use. So yeah. we're constantly looking for those guys that, man, they have a huge upside, right? So maybe they're a tight end that doesn't run quite well enough, but – boy, can he add 30, 40 pounds and become an offensive tackle I think because he already possesses those those athletic ability traits that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, I think that happens a lot. Happens a lot of O-line, happens at tight end. Um, some receivers that 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 grow into their bodies sometimes that right. it just takes time, you know. So, yeah, for sure, you know, to us, the two words is recruit and develop. I mean, those yeah. are the two things we need to do and, and because that that's who we're going to be and that's who the type of kid we're going to get. But and another thing associated with Duke is intelligence. Yep. Well, I think football players have to be smarter now than they ever were before. I think offensive linemen, I, I don't know if it's smart. I think it's smart uh, to coordinate, to, yep. to re, I mean, to relate. You've got to be able to recognize. Recognize yep. is a better word, but end of my sermon on that. Well, story. no, I, I think you're right because there's so much more football is different. Football is advanced, you know, and, and, yeah, and yeah. defenses are playing three down and four down and they're blitzing from all over the place. And, and there's this whole RPO right world now that college football lives in. So yeah, there's just more to it than just blocking power right. and or blocking your gap for a zone. There's just way more to it. So if you, and coach El, for Elker has the, Elko has this last say, what kind of guys do you bring to him? What if you? What is he when you tell us I want to see this kind of kid? That's any position. What are you bringing? What are your coaches bringing to him? Well, one, they got to be smart, like you just said, right? So not only just book intelligence and, and school intelligence, but also a high football IQ, right. because we're, we're going to play to our strengths, and, and we don't back away from that. We're going to recruit smart players, right? Um, so we, we need guys that are intelligent. We need guys that are tough. Um, that are mentally tough and physically tough because as again, that's the type of place we're going to be. And that's the type of culture that, that, that we want to recruit. Um, and then the last thing I think I would say is we want to recruit kids that are high character kids that, that you can trust, that you can push, you can coach, um, and that, you know, are going to do the right things on the weekends. I, I think those are three of the qualities that we're looking for on all of our guys. Um, and then obviously the fourth piece is their athletic ability, right? We need kids that are really good players, but if they have intelligence if they have some toughness and they're high character kids, we feel like we got a good shot. That's really good. You know, I use another cliche with, and I have to be careful on this one is I, I say to a high school coach, would you let him stay at your house all weekend? No, no. 
Yep. And I got to be careful. I slide into those because they'll get offended. But uh, you'd be surprised the guy said, no, John, I wouldn't. Right. You know, things like that. And, uh, sure. of course, I wouldn't even let my daughter stay on my weekend. She'd steal yeah. all my things there. But <laughs> yeah, that's a anyway. good one. You got to be careful. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. I'll, that, I'll cut that out. Yeah. But, uh, okay, what what is – Let's go something different now. When they're doing evaluate, well, you guys are out doing eval evals now and stuff. And I know the rules broken more than just saying hello. You can talk more to kids, but what else? What do you expect from kids now? What do you uh, you go into a, you go into the school? What do you ex, how do you, what do you expect from a prospect? Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question. I would say. Again, in the evaluation period, when we're not allowed to talk to them, you're just looking for a young man that possesses some confidence. I, I would say that um, that some confidence in who they are um, and what they know. Uh, and you can tell by how a kid acts. You can watch him in the weight room. You can watch him at practice. <laughs> you know, you, you can see how, how confident is he? Uh, what type of leadership capabilities does the kid have? Uh, because there's nothing worse than investing a lot of money in someone who really is a good player. But quite honestly, when you put them on a big stage at college football, they crumble because they don't possess the, the personal confidence that it takes to, to work and be successful and to stand out on the field in front of 100,000 people and go execute your craft. I mean, that that's not easy, right? These kids are under a lot of pressure. So I don't think if they have that confidence um, and really the leadership capability, then I think that makes it tough. Um, that's one thing that I'm always looking for. And then I would say this, like when I do get a chance to talk to kids on the phone, I'm always looking and, and I love it when a kid asks me questions because that just shows that there's an interest. It shows that they care, but it also shows that they're thinking about the right. recruiting process. They're thinking about my school. To me, there's nothing worse than a kid who says, I don't have any questions for you. Well, that just means you're not even thinking about my school. You don't even really care. You're not you're not mature enough to even be thinking through this process. And, you know, I tell kids like, listen, you're involved in a million dollar business right now, <laughs> college football recruiting and, and college football in general, it's a big business. And yeah. so we're not going to invest money in somebody that we don't think is worthy and, and, and capable of succeeding in college. Yeah. And so I think there are always cues. Um, I, would See, say I, this, use, I use the one question and uh, is one question is, one of your camp camp dates. I mean, I I tell the kid uh, to the player. I said, ask them that because that shows you're interested. Yep. I said, but don't ask them things like how many spots are open or what's the depth chart. I said, yep. you, you can, but that gets too. You know, you ask them better questions than that. It does, but I, I think when a kid asks, you know, what majors does your school have? What yeah. what what does study hall look like at your school? Um, you know, what do you demand of your players? What does nutrition look like at your school? Do you have your own nutritionist? Uh, when do you practice? Are you a morning practice team? Are you in the afternoon? Uh, tell me about, you know, can I get my master's at your school? Uh, do, do most of your players graduate in three years or four years? I just, there's so many things that I think kids can be aware of just to show an initial interest in a college that it's just a turnoff to me when kids say, no, I don't have any questions. Yeah. Well, then that shows me you're not even really thinking about what's going on. Yeah, Duke and stuff. That's really good. Uh, okay, what kind – I ask prospects this, and I'll ask you – I have two more questions. Yeah. You know, we've gone, we've gone almost 19 minutes. It just goes so fast. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm, not not I'm, I'm a 20-minute guy yeah. shooting, <laughs> but with podcasts. But what kind of energy – will this new Duke staff bring to Duke? What kind of energy will it bring? You've kind of alluded to it a little bit ago, but what kind of energy will it bring? Well, we're going to have to bring a lot of energy and, and I would say just a high level of energy of just of some belief and some optimism that we now have uh, um, um, pieces in place, if you will. And, and, you know, Coach Elko's done a good job, one, just starting with him and his leadership and his experience and with what he's done, but also just in the money that we're going to put in and, into building some new facilities and upgrading some facilities. Okay. Um, 
and just really working to build some relationships with our players and, and to have some confidence in that. But, you know, we're going to, we realize that, listen, like we're, we're the ones in charge of our own energy and we can't expect anyone else to do it before we do it, you know? So um, I, I just think that, that for us, everything we do every single day, we're going to attack the day. We're going to work to win the day, but we're going to work to be our best that we can be first, make sure we're putting a good product on the field. And then we're going to create more energy in this community once we show them what we're capable of doing. Right. And uh, get capability first and get to the community and yep. just build it up. You know, you know, Coach Fickle is a good friend of mine, but Cincinnati, yep. you know, in case of point, you know, and that's possible every place, I think, you know, yeah. hard work and fortunate and everything else. Yeah. But that's really good. I, the last question I have for you, and I don't, uh, what about the, in your words, the transfer portal. Okay. What is it good or bad? Well, it's a great question, man. It's a loaded question. And I'm not sure that there's enough data out quite yet that maybe says either way. Um, I certainly can see both sides of it. I, I see the side that says that, that a young man deserves the opportunity um, to move on. If, if, if things aren't going his way, if, you know, if, that, you know, the point is if college coaches are allowed to leave, well, then why aren't we as players allowed to leave? And I certainly see the argument of that. I think what we're creating, though, is an environment that really outweighs that argument in that you're giving kids an out and a chance just to run away from problems if right. things aren't going their way. Right. And I, I think that's really the worst part of it, because what, what you're seeing is that there are thousands of kids in this portal that don't have anywhere to go. And so if you're not careful, if you're a student athlete and you say, well, I'm out of here, I'm leaving, things aren't going my way, you better have a place to go or else you might get stuck with nothing. Yeah. And, you know, so the old saying that, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. Well, maybe not, you know, so you, you, need, to be careful. <laughs> yeah, you need to be careful. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, in my humble opinion, I, I think it can be good. I think it's you just have to be real careful and do your homework. Um, you know, the programs that are only going to recruit portal guys. Right. And and I think you're taking away from opportunities of high school kids right. for that reason now, because schools are just recruiting transfers. Yeah. Um, but I just think you have to be careful and, and know what you're getting when you recruit somebody out of the portal. OK, coach, I really appreciate your time. You've sold Duke to me. My last question was, what can Duke do for my grandson? Yeah. And, uh, we've kind of talked about that a little bit, but you've said it if we go back. And so I really appreciate you yeah. being on. I really do. You've done a great job. It's, yeah. you know, I remember when you, when I wrote about you, you were on once to watch, I think. Yeah. At, at Pick One. And I yeah. forget what but I put you, I used to do that magazine and stuff. And I'm pretty sure you were in that. I mean, yeah, that, I went, that, I went, era, that time, I mean. Yeah, no, you were spot on. I, I think when I played at Dayton, that was probably the perfect place for me. Uh, it was probably maybe a lower Mac guy or a University of Dayton guy. But I absolutely yeah. lo love my experience. I, that was a, the right place for me. And, and I, again, John, I think a lot of people love your service because you are very accurate and you're on point and, um, I know it's very much appreciated by a lot of coaches in, in this industry. Well, I appreciate the comments and I'm, you know, I'm getting older. So <laughs> gotta, thank you very much, Kevin, for yep. being here. Okay. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, buddy.